<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mature or Decrepit PI. So this week things are going to be a little bit different because I've hurt my back and the video that I wanted to do with the Influenza and a 456 which is another um, Ferrari that was bought during the pandemic without being seen I haven't been able to do because of my back. So something that I have really been wanting to do is something about two really, really unusual Ferraris. Firstly, we're going to talk about the creations of Swiss-Italian car designer Franco Sbarro, who is as mad as a box of frogs. See, for example, his work on making a Rolls-Royce Corniche into a hunting vehicle. Why hadn't anyone thought of that before? Next, we're going to talk about car collector Bill Harrah, who was friends with Steve Bennett, Frank Sinatra, Steve Martin. If you're a gambling magnet in Reno, if you've been married seven times, you're extraordinarily rich, very successful, you have a car collection of 1,400 cars, what's the next logical choice? It is to make the Gerari. But first of all, let's start off with the Sbarro Super 8. One thing most people agree on about the 308 is that it's an incredibly pretty car, so it takes a particularly mental kind of person to decide they're gonna whip off the body and graft on a hatchback. This particular car came to me via Herbert Van Quick, who is a viewer. Hi Herbert. And he got in touch with me about my single exhaust and said, oh, I might be interested in um, taking a look at that if you're going to get rid of it for my Sparrow Super 8. So I looked up Sparrow Super 8 thinking, what the heck is that? Perhaps it's some kind of kit car that uses a Ferrari V8. But I found out it's actually much, much more than that. So the chassis, the engine, the gearbox, the steering, everything is the same. The interior is actually much plusher. So it's been retrimmed with uh, quality soft leather. The only difference really is in the center console, which is slightly different. But the body has been completely remodeled. Now, as crazy as that sounds, you have to realize that back at that time in the early 80s, hatchbacks, very hot hatchbacks, were very much in vogue for Group B. So you had the Renault 5 mid-engine cars, you had the Renault, the, sorry, the Metro 6R4. Zbara originally made the Super 12, which was a tubular chassis car with two Kawasaki inline six-cylinder engines, making it an inline 12-cylinder with 230 horsepower. They're motorcycle engines, each running one of the rear wheels separately. So an absolutely mental bit of kit and then decided to do the more sensible thing and just get a 308 and put that body on it. Originally, the, the Sparrow Super 8 was designed to go into some sort of limited production, but I'm not surprised it didn't. As a donor car, the 308 made very little sense. It would have been hugely expensive. And who in their right minds would have decided to spend more buying a car that didn't have the Ferrari badge and didn't really look as pretty. You'd have to be quite an unusual kind of person to go for that deal. All the same, I actually really like it. I think it's a piece of history. It's a really unusual car. I think it looks good. It's just that it's based on a car which is so quintessentially pretty that it's quite hard to make a comparison. The Sparrow Super 8 was 
about 300 kilos lighter than this, the normal carb steel body cars, and probably about 150 kilos lighter than the Vetra Resina cars. So, using the same engine, it would have been, it would have probably been quite significantly quicker. The only difference I can see in the chassis wise, I don't know if the suspension was tuned or changed, but certainly the wishbones and everything are the same as a normal 308 QVs. But you can see that the rear wheels are ditched to accommodate those massive 285 by the time, anyway, 285, 40, 15 inch wheels and tires. So the rear end of the car at least is definitely much wider than a standard 308. And maybe that helped to make it a little bit more manageable and more stable. If I'm ever in Belgium, I'll make sure to stop by Herbert's house and do a video on it because I think it's a, it's a super interesting car. And it's a perfect example of the kind of craziness that used to happen with tuners in the 80s. Legend has it that Bill Harrah wanted a car that was capable of taking him in comfort between his casinos in Reno and the ones in Tahoe. Just imagine that you're rich enough to do whatever you want. Imagine you're friends with Sinatra, with Steve Martin, with Tony Bennett, and you have a collection of 1,400 cars, but you want something a bit special. What do you do? You ask Enzo to make it for you. So he asked Enzo to build him a 4x4, and surprisingly, since Enzo's always been so accommodating, Enzo said no. So, Hara decided that he would make his own. He got a Jeep Wagoneer, and a Ferrari 365 GT, took all the running gear out of the 365, so that's the engine, the gearbox, um, a little bit like steering wheel, bits like that, and transplanted it, including the front end of the car, onto a Jeep Wagoneer. So changing the 350 cubic inch American V8, which was 230 horsepower, for the Ferrari 4.4 litre V12, which put out 330, but much peakier horsepower as well. It'd be quite interesting to know how it actually drove. Um, they must have changed the final drive on it to make it more drivable. There are actually two Geraris made. The first one that you see here, the green car, courtesy of Don at Left Coast Classics, with the Ferrari 365 front end grafted on it. So that was the first model. Stories go that Bill Harris' security decided that the car was just too unique and too visible and posed a security risk. So for the next model that Bill Harris made, he actually got a Wagoneer and did a similar conversion, but without, it was a later Wagoneer, but without using the Ferrari front end on it. So it was much more of a sleeper. It still had some really unique little touches, like for example, the special Gerari badges, it had the Ferrari steering wheel, the running gear was completely Jeep Wagoneer, apart from engine and gearbox. The original Gerari was sold quite recently, and there is a story on Auto Build, a German car magazine, and it looks like it has actually gone to Germany. It sold for about $20,000, which seems quite good value until you realise that it comes with no Ferrari V12. It has 350 cubic inch V8, as the original car would have been, but it does still have that Ferrari front end, so it is a it's still an incredibly unusual car and a part of history. And the other Gerari actually resides in a museum, I think it's in Reno, which has about what's left of 200 of Bill Harrah's original cars. As a styling exercise, I don't think you can say that the Gerari was a roaring success. And while I was looking at this, I just thought, well, why didn't Bill Harrah just buy himself an LM002? you know, the Lamborghini off-roader when Lamborghini made them before anyone else had thought of it. Well, the reason is that the Lamborghini L LM002 was only made from 1986 onwards, and this car first came out, the Gerari, uh, was first out in 1969. It just shows you what a pioneer Harrah was in a way, because the market now for sports SUVs is massive. So he was a complete visionary, and it's a shame that Enzo never took him up on that offer and made them a 4x4. I don't know what you think of both of these cars. Personally, I find the Gerari an interesting curiosity and quite ahead of its time. And the Sparrow Super 8, I do, I, I like it. I wouldn't now take one of these, chop it up and put that hatchback body on it. But I think it's actually quite interesting. I quite like it. I like the way it looks. And it's functional as well. It's not just a graft or a body kit. That's not what Sparrow did. He may have been mad, but he did things properly. 
So it's much lighter and it's going to be much faster than one of these. Maybe more like an original Vetro Resina, but I think even faster than that. Thank you all so much for watching. Next week we're going to get back to a more traditional Influenza episode where I'm going to be working on the sound with the exhaust and the airbox and other things that I have been looking at. So thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram and see you for the next one.